All right, 1.4 and 1.6, the limit of a function. Remember, the limit as x approaches a of f at x is equal to l. Reads as the limit of f at x as x approaches a is equal to l. That means as x gets closer to a, it does not reach a or equal a, but it gets close enough that it so closely resembles a that the answer is essentially the value of f at a. Every polynomial function is considered continuous. The definition of a continuous function is if p of x is continuous, then the limit as x approaches p of x is equal to p at a. That's why we substitute a into and it pretty much most of the equations we see. Now, a function is considered continuous at x equals a if the following three conditions are met. First rule is f at a is defined. So that means that there is a value of a. And when we plug it into the equation, we get a value that results from it. Second part is the limit as x approaches a of f at x exists. That means that the limit from both sides, whether we take the positive, the left side, or the right side, it has to exist. The third one is the limit of x approaches a of f at x has to equal the answer that we got in number one. Has to equal f at a. If it doesn't equal that and equals something else, it's not considered continuous. So these three conditions, rule one, rule two, and rule three, have to be met in order to be considered continuous. Now, there are three types of discontinuity. So three types of discontinuous functions. First one being considered an infinite discontinuity so that the limit as x approaches this value c of f at x on either side will result in a non-existent value because from the left side it's approaching positive infinity. On the right side it's approaching negative infinity. And at that value, this is considered a uh, uh, asymptote. An asymptote indicates it does not exist at that value. So f at c doesn't even exist as well. f at c doesn't exist. So if you want to think about it, f at c does not exist. So rule one doesn't exist, and neither does rule two or rule three. Ultimately, in order to prove discontinuity, one of the rules is if one of the rules is not satisfied, it is considered discontinuous. Let's look at the next one. So again, we'll explain it as f as we take the limit from this side, we see, so that's for the left side, we see that it approaches pause infinity. The right side approaches negative infinity. So what we're having here is that the function doesn't exist on either side. On either side, one is going to pause infinity, the other one is going to negative infinity, and at that value, it doesn't exist. Number two, removable or point discontinuity. What's happening here is if I take the limit as it approaches from this side, and I take the limit as it approaches this side, they're both going to have a value. So rule two will actually exist. But 
and rule 1 exists because rule 1 has a value right here. But what this fails is rule 3 because the rule 1 is fine, rule 2 is fine, but rule 3 cannot be true because, wait, because the limit that's over here is not the same. So the limit which would be here is not the same as the value particularly at that point, say A. And because of that, it's known as a removable or point discontinuity. Last one, jump or piecewise functions where we have a discontinuity. Now let's just fix this one just a little bit. In order to really truly understand this question, I'm going to color in one of these dots. I'm going to color in going to color in this particular dot. The this first dot up here, I'm going to color. And so that up here, that particular point is actually going to have a value. Let's just do that again and make a dot up here. Okay, so that's a solid dot here. So there's a solid dot right here. Okay, so there's a solid dot and a closed dot. That means that the point exists at C, so rule one is true, Rule 2, though, is not true. Reason why is because if we take the limit from the left side is different from the limit from the right side. So there are two different values. Because of that, Rule 2 cannot exist. The limit as x approaches a value from the left side must equal the limit as approaches the right side. So therefore, this cannot hold true. All right, next one. Looking at limits from both sides, we know that a left-hand limit of a function is considered the limit as x approaches a with a minus. That minus in math understood everywhere in the world, all mathematicians, that I'm looking at the limit as it approaches from the left-hand side because of the minus. The minus side being the left-hand side. And the right-hand limit is of a function is considered as the limit as x approaches a from the right-hand side, so the positive side, of f at x. Again, that's from the right. Hey. Sorry, folks. Next question. If the limit as x approaches a from the left hand is not equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right hand of a function, then you can say that the limit in general does not exist. If the limit as x approaches a from the left hand is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right hand, and that equals a specific value that they both equal, then you can say that the limit as x approaches a of f at x is equal to l. Let's go to the next one. Example 1. Given f at x equals a piecewise, lin uh, piecewise function. So here it is. Here are all the values given to you. And you are asked a question like, State the limit as x approaches 0 of f at x and the limit as x approaches 2 of f at x. What's the problem here? Well, folks, here it's clearly defined. It's telling you, look at where it hits 0. Look at where it hits 2. I could change this question to make this whole piece right here, this whole piece, disappear, and I could write the words, state any points of discontinuity. That means we need to check the end values. 
to see. Does our actual function jump around or does it continue from where it left off? If any of these, sorry, oh, oh, at a round bracket, we would have a point discontinuity because we have a square and a round means that there would be a solid dot here and an open dot here, an open dot here and a solid dot here. So we need to state these limits now. So we take the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side, folks. So which side is the left side of our 0? Well, that, folks, would be this equation because it goes from negative infinity up to 0. So it must be this equation right here. So we take the limit as that x approaches 0 from the, negative, from the left side of f at x, and that equals 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. Now let's look at 0 from the right-hand side. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of f at x is equal to 2. Why is that? Well, if I this is the right-hand side, because it's on the right-hand side of 0, we're going to plug in 0 plus 2. We end up with an answer of 2. So, the limit as x approaches 0 in general cannot exist because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Okay, the lim individual limits exist, but as a whole it cannot exist because the left hand and the right hand are approaching different values. Alright, next part. Limit as x approaches 2 from the left hand, limit as x approaches 2 from the right hand, you're going to have the same values. If you plug it into the equations, you will get the same value. So we're going to take it from the 2 from the right hand, 2 from the left hand, and that will give us the answer that we're looking for. Okay, hopefully everything's good. We're running out of time. Let's go on to the next video.